I'm going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife for saying completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined by the man himself, Mr. Callis Howland, after an interesting way in as weigh-ins go. You getting used to him? Yeah, I mean, it's my second Misfits fight week. Bit of everything, you know, kickoffs yesterday, kickoffs at the, at the press workouts uh, Wednesday, and today, you know, lively. All fun and games today. No, not, nothing too bad. Yesterday was pretty hairy, but uh, no, it was good. It was good. Yeah. So yesterday we had kind of the uh, the mall of the stage, shall we say it? And uh, Andy, security guard, he put everyone in their place. But we'll just quickly before we talk about the way in Tom Zanetti versus Jaden King. That fight's off. I think everyone's it's gutted so, about that. Like mad, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, he kick. They kick off. They get. There's two million views around the world on them kicking off. Huge numbers trending. And then the guy last night apparently informed uh, my partner, Mams Taylor, he's, up, he's off the card. So I said, no, nah, is he injured or what? And, uh, Mams tells me he's, he's absolutely bottled it. So um, I don't know what happened in that clash yesterday. I would say, uh, if you haven't seen it, you can see... Look, go look back at it. It was it was very real, and you know there was uh, a couple of things that landed in a, in a way. I don't know if he felt something that he was worried about today. I don't know. Maybe he thought well, it's actually me man on man now, and it's not like ten against one or whatever. You know, it, was, it looks. It just looks like like something has happened there in his mind overnight, and it, it is what it is. But. I'm not that involved on the fighter side of these things. I was just up there and you could see the look on my face. <laughs> just like, whoa, you know, and uh, fortunately they tore down half our stage, but never mind. You know, these things happen at Misfits fight week. Yeah, only at Misfits. Uh, so where does this leave Tom Zanetti now, do you know? Because I think a lot of people were excited to see him yeah. fight. He looked in good shape and that's two opponents now pulled out. It was, and, and we had we had a one other offer for him to get out as well today but we felt that it was it would have been a bit bit too short notice and especially it's not classic boxing we wouldn't have known much about the person health does come first and we'd have to you know we'd have to have done our obviously our checks it just simply wasn't enough time in the end um but no he's he's going to be boxing on misfits card soon we got one pretty much every month so um, you know, he's a great, great lad, and uh, you know he's gonna he's gonna be a big addition to the team at Misfits. We've had fighters try and kiss their opponents to try and intimidate them in the past, but I'm not sure about kissing the promoter or attempting to kiss that. Astrid Wet stole the show today, didn't she? In that outfit and uh, going for that kiss. I've got to say the outfit, and then the uh, attempted kiss. Yeah, Astrid certainly went for it. Um, I mean, yeah, I've never seen such a fantastic outfit at a weigh-in. <laughs> Excellent. That uh, gives everybody Bridges uh, run for her money, that one does. Yeah, but uh, does. KSI, he pulled away. Would you have done the same, Callum? Well, actually, uh, she went for me. <laughs> so I sort of sidestepped, and then KSI's just gone back. Fantastic reactions. I mean, you know, you can see why Jake Paul don't want to fight him. <laughs> you know, um, look at the reactions on him. Um, but like, as I said, she did go for me, and then I sort of swerved, and then she uh, went for went for KSI, and, and he done a, he done a fantastic reaction out of there. You can see be, see the speed on the man. And I'm sure you've never seen a fighter come out with two cigarettes in his mouth with Shirley's in the main event. Yeah, you know, actually, I went I went straight over to my uh, to my brother. I said, you know, is that actually like have we broken laws on that or something? <laughs> he said, no, nah, you're all right. They weren't lit. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, we're okay. I remember doing shows with Don King. He would always rock up with the cigars, but they were never lit. So uh, we got away without them today in this wonderful hall, Cutler's Hall in Sheffield. Imagine we'd lit them up on stage. Fantastic. I saw someone, Burn that I, painting I saw down. someone walking around with a bong as well before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like, and filling it with prime, you know. <laughs> it was like, 
bizarre, uh, but like I said, bizarre, misfits, it's all part of the show, you know, it's all entertainment. And just last one on Misfits, when is the next show going to be announced? Have we got any developments on that for a November show potentially? Uh, yeah, November 17th, it will be in Austin, Texas. We've got Hassi Mahman Jr., we saw him here at the weigh-in. Uh, he'll be fighting none other than Vitor Belfort. Uh, November 17th, on the zone in Texas. Boom, that was an announcement. On the zone. No, on the zone in Texas uh, on August 17th. What the hell was that? When's the next one for the UK then, Color? Uh, early next year, uh, December's off. Big, big one planned. Uh, just working together with the zone at the moment to plan our January, uh, which will be Misfits uh, X Series on the zone number 004 in January. I don't know what they're doing there, mate. I think the, the weigh-in's not over yet. Someone seems to be going off again. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I think back in the UK probably February. What's the deal with then? What's the deal with the pay-per-views then? Is it going to be a pay-per-view? You said it, you teased the massive, massive fight. Yeah, I mean the, the big one in January will be pay-per-view. It'll be worth it. You'll see. It's the biggest ever. If we pull off what we're planning, it will be the biggest ever show in the crossover segment ever. Does it involve KSI? Absolutely. Excellent. Uh, I won't keep you too much longer. You've been asked all week about Eubank Ben scenario. I just want to quickly get your comment on the latest development today that the board has officially launched an investigation. That's just to be expected. Uh, sort of statement. It doesn't move us forward, does it? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't understand the point of pointing it out today. I'd be hoping that that investigation was launched a long time ago. I'm waiting for the result of the investigation and not the announcement of the launch of the investigation. So, yeah, uh, not particularly helpful on my end because we're waiting. Just picking this back up with Callum as uh, we, got, we got moved by, by the noise, didn't we, Callum? Yeah, we did, we did. We got blown over by the noise. Yeah, let's just go back to that then. How long can you wait around for this to be resolved with Conor Ben and when are you going to be looking for the next steps in Chris Eubank Jr.'s career? Uh, that's already begun. Yeah. We're not waiting around at all. Um, putting plans in place for scenarios. At the same time, of course, we're looking at you know this investigation, um, which I believe was already underway. I mean, when I see the announcement today, I don't, I don't know what... What, what, what's launched? Why is it launched today? The investigation. I, I don't know. I don't know if that was a typo. Um, every day is a day off Junior's career. Um, he's 33. He's in the prime. So once again, go back to what I said. That I think the handling of the matters needs to now speed up uh, dramatically because a lot of people are affected by it. Um, uh, at the same time, that doesn't stop us looking at future plans, you know. And uh, Billy Joe, of course, uh, next year is a name. Uh, our number one target, we know, everyone knows it is, uh, is Golovkin for 2023. Um, you know, those fights are all very makeable, you know. Uh, saw Kel Brook um, up here at the gym the other day, threw his, threw his hat in the ring, but. I, I, don't know, I never know whether that's for real or not. We've been down that road before. Uh, he looked like he needs to shift a bit of weight. I saw someone that he said he's ready in February, March. Um, so, you know, Junior Junior will be uh, out sooner than that. If you could choose in colour, would you look to go down a vacated title route or a big domestic fight with the likes of Kel Brook and Billy Joe Saunders? We want the big fights, you know, and the big fights is, you know, like I said, top of the pecking order is Golovkin, you know, always has been, always will. Um, but there's, you know, there's, there's other big fights that don't involve a belt. There's also the vacant title fights, so you know, lots of options. The good thing is it's not a situation where there's no options, there's loads of options. And uh, we'll just work out what the best ones are for Junior, sit down with him. I was with him a couple of nights this week in London, um, talking plans, but, you know, we're fully aligned there and you know, it's now working out what the best options are. 
Last one from me then, 24 hours of Misfits series. Two, what should people expect when they tune in live on design? Fun, entertainment, craziness, Misfits. That's what to expect on Misfits Boxing. But, you know, and don't go in there thinking you're going to see, you know, the next uh, Roy Jones box, uh, Muhammad Ali crossed by uh, Marvin Hagler. No, it's fun. It's novice boxing, it's entertaining, they're characters, and they've taken this very seriously, although some of them don't look like they've taken it very seriously, but they've all been trained for this. It's their moment of that, and you know, for us, it's, it's, it's entertainment. So don't, don't need to compare it to classic boxing, completely different objectives here. The objectives, though, don't interfere with boxing. I like when I see people knock it for the same good for boxing the rubbish absolute rubbish how is he not good for boxing they're novice boxers you know they've all got some sort of celebrity status in a certain area bringing new eyeballs to the sport bringing fresh money to the sport which by the way this week we were up in, in, in uh, attracting attention to, a, to the biggest one of the biggest boxing clubs in the world you know but in that in their spaces no one knows Ingalls Gym in our space, everyone knows in Gym is an absolute institution of great champions. But now, some young people outside of Sheffield will know Ingalls Gym, and you know it's it, 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 you see the little benefits, but it spreads into you see a lot of pro trainers being involved in this training these guys and girls up. They're getting paid off that. That goes back into their gyms, into their teams. It's, it's, so no, there, there is plenty. There's too many pros to argue with that. And I'd like uh, anyone who wants one, maybe we'll have an open debating session on it one day with some of the hardcore. Because I, I get the concerns, you know, to convince uh, my old man on it as well. But there's too many of them. Yeah, we'll try and get that debate with someone one day on IFL. Thank you very much for speaking to me today, Kala. And I'll see you tomorrow at the final. Absolutely. Cheers, Kala. But I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session.